Warning, this podcast contains spoilers. If you haven't played Halo 4 yet, well, don't watch this podcast. Enjoy the show. Hey everyone, and thanks for joining me and my my friend Bobby. We're going to be uh, like doing an overview of Halo 4. This includes a review and reactions to Halo 4 in general. So, uh, again, here with Bobby, and Bobby and I are big time Halo players. It's starting now, right? Yeah. Okay, cool, great. But yeah, yeah, big time Halo fan. Since Halo 2 for me. Yeah, me too. Uh, same thing for me, Halo 2. Wow. You know, it's, because people say, oh, you, you like Halo? I'm like, yeah. Was, oh, yeah, you remember Halo 1? I'm like, yeah, I never beat it. And they're like, what? <laughs> I never I, people, people actually that. never asked me that. Like, But yeah, it was Halo 2 that got me into it. Now that you actually said that, it made me think, like, holy shit. Like, that game came out and, like... Yeah, that game came out a long time ago. Wow. Halo 2 was about... I don't remember exactly the year, but it was... I think it was, like, 2004 like, or something like that. Yeah. But anyway, this was, is 2012 and Halo 4 came out, so... We're so gonna I started be, Halo 2 like most people did when they were 12, and, uh, you know, that's how I got out to, into it. Exactly. <laughs> and then the people that were our age are now, like, 31 or something, or in the 30s somewhere, yeah. Yeah, you go on Halo and you're like, no, we don't want 12-year-olds on our team. No school. Weakers, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Halo. So now we're just gonna be like over like, discussing Halo overall, like the storyline, multiplayer, mostly other stuff. Um, so like, uh, campaign was pretty good, I think. Like you know. For, uh, Halo Four. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it, I thought it was really good. I liked how the Master Chief actually talks now. That that really helps you know in the story. It's not just him just staring there stone-faced. I mean, you don't see his face, but, you know, staring there ignoring right. people. Well, you do see a part of his face in the legendary ending. I saw that. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you, you, you're, cause you're, you've always, like, challenged yourself and put it on legendary. I always am just lazy and, like, put on normal or easy. I'm working, on, I'm working through the campaign on legendary by myself right now. Not That's, right now, now, you know. Yeah. Now. And, like, there was just, like, more opportunities to do different things in this campaign compared to other Halo campaigns, you know? Yeah, I like how this one, like, it never felt boring to me. Because usually, uh, I think in Halo 3, I kind of felt like, oh, man, when is this going to end? This time, I, I was surprised that it ended so soon. Because they always kind of change it up in the gameplay-wise. Because you're, you know, just running around, and then, you know, you're on running on a ghost through a collapsing canyon. It's really cool. Like, it's a really good pace they set up for the campaign. Yeah, and like, you know, you flew that fighter jet, like. Oh, you plug it. What? Oh, you're at the end of the game, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that was that was a cool part. I like I kept crashing the first time. <laughs> nice. When I first played the game, I was always I was playing like I was listening to the soundtrack from the actual game. Even though it's like I think one person told me to listen to the soundtrack, I was playing some like just some, like metal music and stuff like that, like while like flying the aircraft thing like just playing the, like, the final like levels and stuff it's funny because uh, people like they say oh the soundtrack's great I never heard it like I, I didn't really hear it throughout the, the campaign I just like oh wait oh you can hear the music like this one time I saw it I never really heard it throughout the game it was very subtle yeah huh? but I noticed that too actually like you had to listen very closely to hear like yeah, hey, look, you kind of knew it's like da na da na na da na na and it, you know, yeah. it wasn't a lot more subtle with it. What I also like is, uh, well, um, the Spartan Ops, which is interesting, I think. That's really cool. I like, uh, I like how it's like an episode. It's like kind of like a TV show, almost. Like yeah, game. yeah. I wonder how many like more like, like being um, Monday. How many more episodes are you gonna do? Like, or I don't... chapters? I mean, actually, would be a better way to put it. Uh, they were at, they were wondering if they were going to do a season two. That's hmm. what people were saying. It's kind of funny. Like, why do you start asking? They haven't even finished season one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's true. I mean, I guess it's really like people really like it. I guess. I the do. only thing I is that you can't play it. Um, you can't watch the movies with your friends. Or I'm not able to. So you have to like exit out, then watch the movie, and then go back into it. Oh yeah, that's true. That's all. I had got the game. I only got the game like two weeks ago, so I had to catch up on all that stuff. And I was playing with a friend of mine, and we I had to leave the game, watch the movie, and then come back every single time. It's kind of annoying, but 
was a small, a little small nuisance. It wasn't that big of a deal. So for like, a, I used the 14 day trial pass, even though I already have an Xbox Live account to play Xbox Live. <laughs> that silver account, damn it. <laughs> oh god, yes, I got, and, and it expired too, so I have no gold now. Tangent round now, since we came up with a topic of silver accounts. Silver accounts on Xbox Live are the most useless things. It is. It's like you can't do anything. Inspired. It, and I was like, I didn't, have, I didn't have automatic renewal because I don't like to have a credit card attached to the account. Just, something about that just doesn't sit right with me. No, I, I um, can, I can totally agree with that. You know. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'll get the, I'll get it, I'll go to the store and get it later. I, it was like two weeks, and I'm, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm on my Xbox. I'm like, oh, let me go on Netflix. So I can't do. Do that unless you're a gold subscriber. I'm like, oh, come on. Yeah, Seriously? It, same thing with YouTube. It's like, you can't do anything. Can't even use that. It's like, come on. <laughs> can, you, can you use the party chat system or... Party chat? You can private chat, which kind of is like an old callback to the old days of Xbox before parties. Can you do parties, though, or no? No, you can't. Not if you're a silver account. Oh, my God. You can't do anything as a silver do a damn thing. You can just be there and annoy your friends every time you come online. Right. You just send in private chat messages like I do. You can probably, like, uh, you can also download demos, but that's really about it, yeah. But let's go, let's jump back into Halo 4. Okay, yeah. We're done. No more. <laughs> <laughs> um, weapons, I mean, like, pretty good, pretty amazing amount of weapons, you know, no dual wielding, dual wielding again, no. Um, that's good fun. What? It's gone. Yeah. It's Halo 3, right? Uh, it was in Halo 3. Halo Reach, I... Oh, I have dual wielding. Halo Reach didn't have dual wielding. Um, but yes, the first one that stopped it. Some of the weapons, though, like... I, I'm, some of the, like, the, that saw gun, like... It's, it's, it's like, uh... It's, like, it's cool that they put that in the game, in my opinion, because it seems more of a, like, a realistic armory, kind of, like, armor like weapon selection you know like you have your assault rifles and your machine guns but then you have your heavy heavy machine guns you know like how we have in our military today so that's i think the saw represents that but like the saw feels i feel as though the saw like you know it doesn't seem to like have as much firepower as it should you know well i don't online online it does have some firepower you just got to be really up close yeah i mean i just don't know if you know Ooh. If that should be the case, like maybe it should be a little bit longer range. Um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much just satisfied with the game overall, though. I mean, like I will say that there are a couple things, though, that like. Uh, what do you think of DMR, like in multiplayer? The DMR. Is uh, it just me or is it overpowered? That's, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> I like it. I mean, I don't think it's overpowered. Uh, I feel so. It's fine. Yeah, I just, I just feel like it. It really, it, it's more powerful than it was in Reach. And like you can you can out BR you can out DMR someone who has a BR. Huh. You can just murder them. <laughs> it's not even a matter if you if you don't. Do it, I, mean. I really like that one gun. It's like it shoots like a little detonator thing. It's just like and then you press a button to detonate it. You know, like if someone's coming towards you, you could just shoot that and run away. And then when like they're about to, when they walk over that thing, you just press the trigger and like it explodes and kills them. <laughs> and having them run into a pack of people and then poof, gone. That too, you know. And then I got they got rid of that overshield thing, you know, in terms of the power ups. No, it's still there. No, overshield. Not the overshield. Just, uh, yeah, the um, overshield's in there. You have to get it as a supply drop. Um, not the over. I maybe it was something. It was something. It's called something different. Uh, in Halo Reach, you know, you use that. Not over. Not overshield. The uh, you know, in Halo Reach, like you use that thing. Like you put your fist into the ground, and, like destroys vehicles and stuff like that. And you're talking about the armor abilities, right? Yeah. You know, like, if you were, like, in a ghost and try to run someone over and they use that power-up, then you just, like, your ghost is destroyed, basically. I missed that thing. That was my favorite armor ability in Halo. <laughs> I hated that thing so much. Probably because I was always in the one... I was always in the ghost, like, getting killed yeah. by that. <laughs> I was always around with it, and I would see, like, a warthog come, and they would just, like, bounce off of me and just flip over. It was great. <laughs> I kind of... I, I like to use the um, the hard light shield, and it's kind of useless. I'm tr I keep trying to use like the armor lock, and it's not working for me. <laughs> I have to get out of that mindset. I do like that. You know, I do like that you can just, sprint though. Huh? 
I like that you can sprint Halo 4, and, like, it's not, like, an armor ability. Like, it's just there, you know? It's bothered me. It is. I hated the sprint. It was, like, it was an armor ability that just wasted space, you know? Why is that not just thrown in there? Right, like, that's what, and I like that they did that in Halo 4, you know? Yeah. Um, just some minor, like, again, just some, like, other things, you know, like, um, some machinima people have pointed this out, like, in theater mode, like, if you turn on, like, if you turn off the all, like, the, like, signs and everything else on the screen, like the player's name and everything else, like, if you kill someone on that, like, mode, in theater mode, like, it'll still show, like, this person killed this person. It's like, you know, why do you need that? Like, the whole oh. purpose of that was to, like, not have anything on the screen. Like, no words or anything like that. Just, to, just you know, show the animation, you know, of the, like, the thing. You know. Yeah, I actually haven't used Forge or theater at all yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a really big Forge person. I used to be in Halo Three. I like to I like to make my own little maps. I mean, they were crap, but I like to just put things randomly. You could like the limited stuff you could do in Halo Three. I still played around with it, but now I just don't really. I'm not really big on uh, using theater that much either. I, I didn't even know this game had a file share until someone mentioned it. I think it was you that mentioned it. <laughs> I mean, like yeah, because I'm I'm interested in Machinima for like this stuff, and like I've heard like complaints from like certain Machinima. Makers, I mean, I mean, it's, it's logical stuff. I mean, like, there's other complaints like that, like, uh, you know, why can't they have, why can't the humans have like a flying vehicle like they did in Halo Reach and Halo Three? Why do you now to take it out? You know, why can't you just put that in? You know, just these are just like minor, like, you know, complaints that like, like they don't really overall overall affect your game, your game playing, but like you just wish they were there, you know. Like, I, I think it would be cool if they put the Pelican in multiplayer, even though it would be kind of useless since it's really big. Yeah. But I th still think that would be awesome. Like, uh, I think in Reach, the, that was supposed to be Blood Gulch. I forgot what it was called in there. But that uh, a Pelican could have definitely fit in that map, that Forge World map. I, I look, uh, another thing is, um, I've always had a problem with the Halo games with this, is like, why, you know, 16 players for the big battle maps? I mean, why can't you just, why can you, like, try doing more like 12 v 12 v 12 or something like that you know 12 versus 12 instead of 8 versus 8 you know because they can add on to it more you know like That's something with like the map design and uh i mean they could make maps like that big uh but i guess it has something to do with the servers and data flow and all that computer stuff that i don't really know <laughs> yeah neither do i but it's like that's what i assume too ser servers but like then i thought you know you, you, Microsoft, you know, could help out here, but like you, you think because like Halo is such a big game, like such a profitable game for the Xbox, like you know, you think that they would put a little more, you know, uh, like you know, um, finance and like other stuff into the game, you know, like. Well, when you can tell with Halo, before they put a lot of money into that game, because <laughs> it's just it's just a great game. You mean like Microsoft? No, I mean I I'm pretty sure the company Three Four Three Industries does, you know. Well, Microsoft, you know is behind Halo, so I'm guessing they would, you know. Okay, put... that's true, probably. I mean, like, I still think they should try to work on that, though. Like, instead of just having 16 players, because, I mean, I know they're more than capable of, you know, that. Yeah, because, you know, you see Battlefield has, like, um, what is it, like, 16 or 12 players on each team or something like that. Yeah, I think uh, Call of Duty uh, also has more than just 8 players per team, you know is the highest nine on each team that's I'm just talking about Call of Duty 4 that's the last one I actually cared about uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean like I mean yeah I mean like I just think that Halo has a very unique sense to it storyline the like, weapons everything oh. else you know all this stuff and they don't really know what it's like to be on the other side like the developer side you know maybe they can't do it you know maybe they don't have time or maybe they just really can't work it into it i mean halo just never felt like a really big war game to me it always felt like a more team kind of base game just uh 16 is a good size i think i mean yeah, it is a good size i just like always felt as though you should always dream about it being that way that'd be cool <laughs> to dream it, about it for halo one you can have huge battles in there on pc anyway oh on pc yeah yeah on pc and then on halo 2 they have the pc version for that but they went as far as that, so oh well. They're just gonna probably stick with Xbox from you know now on. I mean, I'm always I'm curious to see what like the story what the storyline entails, you know, because the Arbiter wasn't in the Halo Four, but he was mentioned in the prequel novels. 
like there was like these novels um, that were per- that were published a lo- in a, in a, like that went along with the Halo st- like the theme of the Halo story like the the the, uh, the storyline is set like between Halo three and Halo four and the Arbiter is in that and you know all these like other characters from Halo three are in there and so it kind of like helps to build up the tension but like the thing is like what I always find I still find confusing is like the Covenant or the what they're called now the Storm Covenant I think it's called like it's a remnant it's part like a remnant of you know the former uh-huh. Covenant but uh-huh. like it's not really I don't know it's not really explained like how they came to be or like why they're still fighting like humans yeah. you know they're safe I mean this is the first game in a trilogy that they're planning out so I'm pretty sure questions will be answered Hopefully they don't do a Gears of War and answer stupid questions that everyone obviously knows, and they just never answer the good ones that everyone wants to know. Like, for example, in Gears 3, you're hoping to finally get a story about the Locust, but then they just tell you, oh, this is how secrets are made. Yeah, they just put the bombs on their backs. It's like, yeah, we know that. We didn't really need to be showed, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I never actually played Halo. I mean, I, I never actually played Gears of War 3, so... Really? <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, except that one time, like, I was with you and we played the horn mode, and that was it. Um, but yeah, the one thing, uh, I was kind of disappointed the Arbiter wasn't in Halo 4. I was yeah. Kinda, I was like, oh, I want to see this guy again. I'm pretty, I think he's going to show up again. I, I'm, I'm almost certain he's going to show up in, like, Halo 5 or something. Yeah, you know, I, th- I heard Halo 5 was supposed to be, like, a darker, quote-unquote, story than this one was. Yeah. I think it's kind of... I mean, is Cortana really dead? You know, um, I was looking that too, and then when you go to the campaign and select uh, the mission, like the end, it says after Cortana's death, so I'm like, oh yeah, she's dead. <laughs> okay. But feeling... I, I don't know, I just have a, a, a feeling that they're going to bring her back in some way, the one thing out of their ass, and say, yeah, we can we can save her. Yeah. Um, and then the Forerunner guy is still technically alive. I... I, I know. What... I, I mean, he did put a he did put a grenade in his chest. Yeah, actually, in that well, part, in that part, um, what I'm talking about. What, I'm sorry, what? But this is Halo we were talking about here, so he could probably still be alive. Yeah. <laughs> Master Chief survives how many falls from space? I mean, this guy's probably living alive. Oh man, he probably he fall, he he survives like a billion falls from space. I was in Halo Three at the beginning of Halo Three after after a fall from space. How do you Halo a fall from space into Requiem? It's like okay, dude, you're still alive after all this. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, and it's like you know your armor sort of burned up in the atmosphere, but it didn't. So oh well. It was behind this thing. I'm like okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's Halo, so you know you can Halo. You know. Everything else is off the table. <laughs> yeah. We need the flood mode. I'm not really too happy with the flood mode. I like it. It's, it's really fun for me. I do... I, I you know, Speaking of flood, it reminds me of the shotgun. The shotgun, the range on that thing. I swear to God, you can kill someone 10 feet away <laughs> in one shot. Like, I have a hard time in, uh, with the shotgun. Flood mode, just to, you just one-shot them. You know what I hate in flood mode is... No, actually, like not even the gameplay itself, the worst thing of all I hate in, the, in flood mode is the squealing noise that the flood makes like it's like shut up really just just like, shut up station is alerted now everyone knows where you are what what <laughs> knows where you are once that goes off the sound like the sound they make well, what do you what's your favorite uh, class to play as for flood when you're playing as a flood oh i like the one where like you with the power up like where you shoot really fast in the air and stuff like that the first one freaking hate that one so much. I hate people that use it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot, dude. <laughs> just kill me. I'm just like, how? I like, uh, personally, I like to use Promethean Vision. Promethean Vision's good, yes, it is. It, it, it's, it's adds a bit of stealth to it, I think. Like the person who's in one active camo and you just, like, turn it on. Hi, stab. <laughs> camo sucks. I mean, it's like, um, I mean, you just move a little bit and it's like, your the camo goes away instantly. It's just. St- stupid screw that <laughs> so it's no. like halo the one thing though that bothers me that i really hate is that when you activate your active camo it pretty much alerts everyone that you're there anyway by putting these blue dots on everyone's radar 
It and does. Don't keep in mind, no one else on the radar is blue or will ever be blue. They'll either be like a yellow, green, or red. What I like right. about Halo is uh, compared to other games like Call of Duty, like I have a better chance of surviving. <laughs> no, you probably have a. Uh, I mean, Halo. I always. Uh, I had Halo. I mean, I have the worst luck in every game I play. So, <laughs> I mean, I'll turn. I'll be like, oh, no one's here, and then I'll turn around. Oh, get shot. I mean, that's just me. I have the worst luck. Oh, okay. Life. That's probably just you then. But sometimes I do get really pissed, but that's just me again, I guess. Like, I just, like, shout out loud, like, like you know, just curse or something like that. Like, or I go... Dude. Rage quit on rooster teeth. <laughs> exactly, dude, exactly. Speaking of rooster teeth, ever since Halo 4 been out, that's, like, the main thing that they're pushing out in video-wise, is uh, Halo 4. I mean, granted, without Halo, you wouldn't have a rooster teeth. Right, exactly. I mean, like, um, I've heard some complaints again from Machinima people. I mean, these complaints I think are make sense because it's like, like in Halo Three and Halo Reach, like when you like disarmed yourself, like, like you lowered your weapon, like, and when and you're moving around when you with your lowered weapon, your weapon's still lowered. But like in Halo Four, if you lower your weapon, stand in place, and then you decide to move. The, the, your weapon raises up for some weird reason. It's just like, why'd you do that? I mean, like you've been doing the same formula in Halo Three, Halo Three, and Halo Reach. No one's fine with it. No one's really demanding it to be different. And like, then you make it different, and it's kind of like, well, why'd you do that? You know, it's because it's a different company. And I'm, by different, I mean ninety percent of it's the same, and ten percent are new people. Because ninety percent of three four three is pretty much Bungie. Um, <laughs> I know. But, it's, yeah, yeah exactly. I, I guess in other games they were more focused on the, you know, theater mode, forge mode. I, I, I don't know. I, I really couldn't comment on it since I don't really play those game modes. I don't play fours that often. But, it's but, uh, like things it's like they kind of they kind of chipped out on that. Yeah, I mean like, like they were talking about in Halo Three, like how they were like they had machinima people in mind. It's like in Halo Four they kind of like, oh yeah, they're still there, but like no, you don't really care about them as much anymore, even though. They kind of have to thank, you know, them in the first place for kind of, like, helping to spread the popularity of Halo to begin with, you know? Like what you said with Rooster Teeth and stuff. You know, it was pretty much started off with Halo, I believe. I don't really... I mean, I think Red versus Blue, like, the one that really took it off. And everyone started trying to make that. <laughs> and that's how you get Machinima. Right. I mean... I would... I am uh, interested again in using Halo Four for Machinima as well. So like, I want to see where that gets me. I have some ideas in mind, and like, I have ideas all around the, everywhere. But like, Halo Reach is still gonna be used. I mean, like, oh yeah, definitely. <coughs> uh, but like, Halo Reach is like, I'm still gonna be using Halo Reach and playing Halo Reach because I I still like Halo Reach, and that's, I mean. A lot of people don't like Halo Reach, and I don't understand why they don't like Halo Reach, because I think Halo Reach is fine, but... What? Um, a lot of people, like, when I ask people that don't like Halo Reach, so one of their reasons is because the Flood's not in it. That's actually my reason for liking Halo Reach. I hated the Flood in the first three games. I was like, uh... The Flood are creepy as hell. It's not that they're creepy, it's just they're really annoying and hard to kill. <laughs> On Legendary, especially. <laughs> always kill you in the worst ways possible but aren't the but pro but the Promethean Knights are pretty hard to kill too I, I have an easier time with them than I have with the Flood just simply because I can melee them in the back and assassinate them <laughs> okay that's true yeah when I play on Legendary I, I try to be really stealthy about it so I don't get murdered constantly yeah because that would be just annoying yeah oh yeah one thing I for we forgot to talk about was the Mantis in Halo, uh, Halo 4. Oh, no, no. You were not going to forget about that, man. <laughs> I love the Mantis. It, you know, if anyone has played Mech Warrior, it kind of reminds me of that. I mean, it's not as in-depth as Mech Warrior. It's not first person, but it still brings back uh, Mech Warrior memories from the e old days. Oh, uh, man. I've always wanted to play, like, some Mech game like that, but I never really could. I never really had the opportunity to. Um... Remember when we were both playing with the Spartan Ox and we were playing the Mech Warrior thing, and then like I mentioned, I've mentioned, I've made a reference to the Matrix Revolutions because we were using the Mantises. For that movie. Yeah, because well, it's, we were basically both using they're both using mechs in different ways, but yeah. 
Yeah, it's kind of funny because everyone says that movie is bad, but when I saw it, I was like, you know, a kid. So I thought I was like, oh, this is cool, right? Right, because all he cared about was like, you know, it's a, it's robots. It's yeah, and shooting, ro- and shooting, you know, sentinels and droids and stuff like that. Cool. I don't. I have to watch them again. I kind of want to watch them again just to see what people are talking about. Well, uh, I recently Jurassic Park is one of my favorite movies of all time, and I recently like, for uh, my birthday I got a uh, the trilogy set. And everyone says that the the second and third movies are terrible. So I was like, oh, you know, I haven't seen those movies in so long. Well, I watched them again. I watched the first one, loved it. Second one, eh. Third one, it's like, okay. <laughs> I kind of see where you're going with it. What I like about the storyline for Halo, compared to, like, you know, the first trilogy, is um, in this trilogy, they already have it all planned out. Like, like... It's not like in Halo when they first came. They first came out the first Halo game. Like they didn't know if they were gonna make a sequel or not. But now, like they actually have, like in t- the intention of making a trilogy with this one. So um, I think it's gonna help a lot with the st- with the story in general. I mean, the story was really good in Halo Four, and like just again helping the storyline in general because now they have like an idea and they have like a set you know picture of what to do. You know. Yeah, you know, uh, that's one of the, like, I made a review for Halo 4 recently, I think about two days ago, I put it up, and one of the things that I talked about was the story and how it, it feels more personal than Halo 1 through 3, because 1 through 3 was basically the Master Chief was just there, the story wasn't really about him, it was, he was just the one who would do everything, you know? Right, yeah. The story in Halos 1 through 3 was more about the people, like, in 3 it was more about Johnson, and the uh, commander keys. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't personal. I, I can understand where I can understand where you're coming off with that. Like, like Halo Four did feel more personal. Like it did feel more like a personal con- Like you felt like it seemed like Mister Chief had more of a personal connection with Cortana than Lucas on Cortana and Master Chief, and that that I think that helped a lot for their story. It just focusing on them and. You know, their main objective is just try to survive and get home. Right, exactly. Because yeah. Chief wants to help Cortana and stuff like that. Yeah, because she's she's pretty much dying, and he's that's the main that's the main you know reason for him to get out of there. Right. And I, I like that a lot. It works a lot more, and the fact that they have it all planned out already, I think it's it feels more like it's a more story driven trilogy than it than the first three. Right. And. The only- I have with all of this is that the next two games are going to be in the next Xbox console, which I will not be getting. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, man, you know, I question that too, to be honest. I mean, I don't know, like, if I should really get the next Xbox console as well. Because I, I have a feeling that the next gen, I don't know, from all these rumors I keep hearing of not being able to play used games, you know, all this other stuff where. They're just gonna have it. Yeah, backwards com- backwards compatibility. Compatibility whatsoever. You know, the, all of that just makes me hesitant. The only next gen console I would consider like is the Wii U. I because I really when I first heard of the Wii U, I hated it. <laughs> I was like, this is gonna be stupid, and I was proven wrong again. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, go ahead and get the Wii U. I'm not getting that thing. Yeah, I'm not gonna get it right away. I'm gonna wait till it goes like the Xbox now is like hundred bucks. <laughs> I'm gonna wait like that. Because I don't really care. Um. Although, uh, the one thing that bothered me about Halo 4, the story, or the campaign, not really the story. Yeah. But, and, like, the, it, the, the end kind of, it kind of was a letdown, because it wasn't really an ending. I mean, not like not like that, but I mean, the, the ending wasn't a boss battle. It was just a quick time. Oh, yeah, I, I see what you mean. I love that part, though, when I when I played the ending and like I was I, I had some like metal song playing in the background and like the part where the, this, the grenade stuck inside the forerunner and he falls down into the slip space portal like there's this awesome guitar solo playing in the background so it's like it makes it just makes the scene more epic you know yeah, get that timing. yeah the timing the timing was perfect like just the guitar solo like the timing it was just yes that's awesome <laughs> you know, uh, it was kind of weird because um, the first when I first played the first mission it was a quick time event when you there's an elite coming at you and you push RB and he just you kill him right. 
when yeah. I saw that, I was like, oh man, is this gonna be a, is this gonna be like Resident Evil Six? Or Call of Duty? No, or Resident Evil Six. Is, have you played Resident Evil Six? No. You want quick time event? <laughs> All right, just go on really quickly about that, yeah. Um. Everywhere, but I was, you know, I was wrong, and it was just that one time, and uh, a lot of button pushing. Yeah, definitely a lot of button pushing. Uh, what well, you? Pointing me, like I said, when they had the last boss, it was a quick time event. It wasn't really a boss, but you know. You know what? Like, I really found interesting when I was still first playing the game was like when I was on the Infinity and like I'm shooting at all these different flying vehicles and stuff like that. Like, I love that with the mantis, I could just like obliterate the phantoms and the banshees and stuff like that. And then like when it when like I activated the defense systems on the Infinity. There's, like, all these different Covenant frigate ships, like, around, like, in the background. And then when I in activated the Infinity's defenses, like, instantly, like, all those ships were just obliterated. And I'm kind of like, what the hell? You know, because it's like, you know, because it's like, you, you know, I thought the human technology was, like, worse than the Covenant. Here's the human technology somehow just kicking the living shit out of the Covenant. You know, the Covenant are just being blown, blown away, you know? It has been four years. I know, that is that is true. And then I, I thought about that, and I was kind of like... You know when you start out, like, when you first go to the Infinity multiplayer section, they have a like, little video, and, and, you know, they say he is caught up and is now one of the giants in the galaxy. Right, yeah. And they yeah. have a really cool cut. Infinity just plows through a Covenant supercarrier. Yeah, that was the other thing. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> it just, like, destroyed the living shit out of that Covenant thing ship, I you know? Now that humans are actually, you know... Not so pathetic. Well, yeah, because they're becoming Halo too. they're becoming a superpower, you know, in the in the galaxy, like yeah, they're making that transition from this. You know, we can relate to that because you know we live in America, so yeah, you know exactly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, seriously though, like you know, it's because like for the past thirty years, I mean, they even said that like in the epilogue. I think that's the way you pronounce it. You know, it's it's the ending, you know, after the credits and, like, all that other stuff, the narration, you know, the Forerunner guy's even, like, expressing his opinion about that, about how, you know, the role of the humans is changing the galaxy or how the role of, you know, our, our, the role of the Forerunners is being endangered by the humans, you know, because he doesn't want that power to be taken away from him and, you know, have the humans take charge. He still wants the power to, like, you know, you know, have an have an influence in the galaxy, you know, and not be taken over by the humans. Yeah, um, the one thing that always confuses like the, about the forerunners was this is the first time that they actually show what they look like outside of their armor. Yeah, and it, it kind of looks weird. It's like whoa, and, and uh, it looks like a vampire that, a little bit. Yeah, they kind of look like Voldemort. All of them look like Voldemort. Oh yeah, that's right. They do. They they don't have a nose either. And it's like actually that's it's funny you said because I was watching that and I was like, oh Voldemort's a forerunner. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even like Harry Potter, I just know Voldemort. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like the forerunners just appeared to Earth and like he's a forerunner, so that's why he's been around forever and like yeah, exactly. Hiding in a ball. What? For the past thousand, he's been hiding in a in a ball for the past thousand years. Exactly. Uh, he's hiding in a ball. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, like it was interesting seeing the forerunner. I mean, I wonder if we're gonna see any more forerunners. I don't, like. I'm not feeling that something else is gonna happen in five. I don't know. Yeah. Is it, aren't they all supposed to be dead because they killed themselves with the Halo Ray? All those times. I think it was either that or like whichever like remaining forerunners were left. They just like went away. They left the they left the Milky Way. And they went to a different galaxy. Yeah, because wasn't it that the uh, the flood was their their major threat, and they were trying to eradicate the flood, and yeah. the only way they do that is by killing themselves, which always kind of felt ass backwards to me. Yeah, if like, you what? if you see um these like animations that I think Halo Waypoint done did, but it was actually like it was it was about the story of that guy. Like it was about the story of him. Are you talking about the ones that you unlock for, um, you unlock by doing something in the game? Yeah, sure. it, it showed him. It was mo it was mainly about him, but it was also his wife, which you see in the game as well. Right, right. And, like, but it's about basically, it's basically his story. And it's about, like, how he made the Promethean Knights and 
how he did that and like yeah, that's what I was planning to watch and I had never got around to it <laughs> oh you haven't seen that yet or I like, haven't seen it. Oh, I'm gonna watch them though I'm gonna try them. maybe I can do it tonight I don't know because like that was his that was his answer to combat the flood was like Promethean Knights and like all this other stuff but apparently it wasn't enough somehow so he decided I mean like the solution was to put like you know again the different species on the halo rings and then like his wife betrayed him because she felt as though his reason, his like, his ways were not right, and like, he so just, aren't the made of like ancient humans? Yeah, exactly. That's what they were made out of. Yeah, they made out of ancient humans. So like, his wife betrayed him, and like, yeah, as you can as you can tell, it's a very complex storyline, and we can go on for over at least an hour about the storyline. I haven't even read all the books. I mean, I never read any of the books. <laughs> I read two of the books, The Fall Reach and uh, Onyx, which is like, like some, it was uh, just, you know, Spartans training, you know, wannabe Spartans, basically. Oh, you mean like Spartan 4s? Yeah. <laughs> Spartan 4s are basically wannabe Spartans, they're not real Spartans, they're not like Master Chief. Yeah. And then like, you know, there was a cinematic visions with Spartan Ops, and one, and one Spartan is asking the Dr. Hazley like about how... Oh, am I a real Spartan? Do you think I'm a real Spartan? Because I wasn't, like, you know, trained as a child that, you know. So, who knows what Dr. Hazley thinks. Yeah, that's uh, one of the one of the key people in the story is Dr. Hall. Halsley. Halsley, because uh, in, in the Spartan... She, yeah, she's involved in Spartan Ops quite a bit, I think. The yeah. last episode she was involved in it. She's, like, uh, she's now in prison or something because of her war crimes for making the Spartans. Right. Because uh, it's, like... It's, it's, like... This is illegal, you know. <laughs> For people who don't know, the Spartans that Halsey made, the Spartan one or Spartan twos, were uh, kidnapped as children about when they were six years old and trained to be Spartans. Yeah, I mean it's kind of basically like they just copycat like the ancient Spartans, except it was all futuristic and yeah. Yeah, and the the, the one thing that the, the the one difference between the Spartan twos and the Spartan fours that are in Halo Four is that the Spartan 4s are just Marines that volunteer to be Spartans and they get injected with something and that makes, it increases their, their muscle and reflexes and all this other stuff and it gives them more strength. It basically makes them super people. <laughs> yeah. And they talk about them like, yeah, hey, you're a Spartan. I mean, they, I mean, like... It's a lot similar to the Spartan 1 program, which was, which was pretty much injection and they, but except they didn't have mule in their armor. They were just regular without armor. Mm hmm. Exactly. And again, I'm just kind of like. The thing is, like, again, about the humans in the story is, like, it's just the overall idea, again, just going back to all this, the whole superpower thing about how they're actually making a presence in the galaxy, because I just like that a lot. I just want to, like, explain why. Because, you know, over the past three decades, you know, imagine just, like, getting your ass kicked. And like just you know, stepped upon and like being the shit out of, and like you try to like do everything you can, but it's like somehow not good enough. And then like all of a sudden you you just come back with like a giant like you know, which is like, which is a huge which is just, just a huge comeback basically. And now you know you're the guy yeah. on the on the block, you know. I think one of the best scenes that portrayed, like, just described that perfectly was, like I said before, the, the, the scene where the Infinity just plows through a Covenant supercarrier. Because if you, when, you know, in Halo Reach, the whole game was pretty, well, half of the game, a part of the game was just about trying to take out one supercarrier. Right. Just of the planet, and you're all like, what should we do? And they had to take a slow space drive from one of the ships and nuke it, technically. Yeah. And they destroyed it, but now they can just pull right through them with their ships, and I think that's just great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, when I saw that, yeah, I, when I saw that, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's basically like, the Infinity is basically humanity's supercarrier. I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that, that thing, it's like, that thing's taking a lot of, like, a hits, a lot of hits, and it's still moving pretty good, you know, it's still in pretty good condition, you know, so... I find it. I still find it funny how that the Infinity carries all the other ships. Oh like yeah, the, that's right. That's that's insane. The ships it carries those and it just drops them out like they're pelicans. It's great. Like like all those like, all those like, 
like forward onto dot on size ships. Those frigates, like just the frig yeah, like it just drops them out, you know. It's uh, it's pretty cool. I like it. So yeah, I mean a lot of cool things again. Um, I just want to say um. Overall, compared to the rest of the Halo games, pretty good. I mean, I mean, like some people prefer the games more than others, but like, I have, I really don't like have that much of a difference. I will say this though about the multiplayer, is that like, get rid of that leaving the battlefield crap, or like have more room to like fly a vehicle or something like that. Because I remember in Halo Two. Like, there was that one city map. And then they bring that map back in the anniversary pack for Halo Reach. And there was this one area I could always fly to in Halo 2 with the Banshee. And when I tried doing the Halo Reach, you can't fly there anymore. Because they'll have the leaving the battle to think, like, ten seconds before you have to come back. And I'm kind of like, you know, why? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the borders but you know I, I can't really say anything about that I never got the anniversary pack <laughs> okay. I never really bought any DLC for Reach and um I never really bought Halo I never bought Halo Anniversary either yeah um but you know the one thing I do like is uh or how do you how do you think how, how do you like that the Spartan Ops or the multiplayer has a story behind why they're multiplayer why there is a multiplayer right how do you how do you think about that you mean the Spartan Ops I like no, that like, in general, the games is the training for the Spartan Fours. It's like all of it, a simulation. Wait, that's the storyline. Yeah, but it's just like the, that's the reason why. It's not really a storyline. It's just the reason why there there is a multiplayer is because it's a training for the Spartan Fours. It's like a simulation. Although it's kind of funny because I asked a friend. I remember years ago when Halo Two was out, and I was I asked a friend like, "Hey, why so is there like why are they fighting each other?" Because I I had never seen the game before. And I was like, so why are the humans fighting? She's like, oh, it's like a simulation for training. And I was like, oh. And I just accepted that. <laughs> nice. Always told me to realize, oh, they just never had a story for it? I'm like, oh, it's weird. Um, yeah, like, okay, like, I, I, okay, I see what you're saying now. And it's, yeah, I mean, that's interesting they did that. I will say, like, I, I wish they didn't take out Firefight, though, because I really liked Firefight. I, I don't know, because Firefight to me was cool in ODST, and then Reach, I was like, eh. In Reach, it just, it, it just didn't have the same kind of, you know, effect that o ODST had. Because in Reach, it was just, you know, it kind of felt tacked on, and you whenever I tried to play online, it was just a lag, lag, no matter what. And I have a pretty good connection, and I would go multiplayer, and fine, but I would always lag for some reason. Um... One last thing is, uh, like, just multiplayer again, like, um, like, oh, like, this is, um, something, like, that doesn't, like, these things, like, the firefight doesn't affect me too much, and this other thing doesn't affect me too much, but, like, if I were to choose, like, to have this in the game, I, I would, and that would be, like, being able to play, multi like, the, the campaign in Xbox Live with, like, other random like Xbox Live people because I remember I could do that like in Halo Reach. Yeah. You know, remember that? I don't know. I, I, I never, I, I don't really like that. I tried it once and everyone was just killing each other, so I was like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I don't like SWAT. I think yeah, I, SWAT. I like SWAT. You don't like SWAT either? No, I like SWAT. Oh, you like it? Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I just suck at it or something because <laughs> it frustrates me playing SWAT. Gun do you use when play SWAT? Do you use the DMR or do you use the battle rifle? I think I use a DMR. See, that's your problem. <laughs> okay. I, I'm playing a long range map, but I would suggest the DMR. But if it's going to be a smaller map, the battle rifle is a lot better. Just because you have that three burst shot and it's, you know, a better spread. I always hate, like, playing the, when I play the game and, like, I don't know where the bullets are coming from. It's like, where the hell are, where are people shooting? You know, where the hell are they coming from? And then it's like, they're like, like, to the. But like behind you from on the left side and it's like you never even saw that coming like you didn't even realize there were even people there to begin with it's like shit <laughs> no, like I said earlier my, my worst thing is I'll be walking through a hallway on SWAT or any game mode and I'll be looking down you know I'm being careful I'm like looking at everything like okay it's clear I'll go and then I just get killed because the second I turn someone pops through the corner and I can't pick them up on radar because they're too far away and they just kill me okay um 
I just bad luck in yeah. my games. <laughs> okay, like here's something I like again: more foraging opportunities again. They made some really interesting maps for foraging. Like they did relay ascent. Um, that one, I that one like tropical looking area that looks really nice, and you can make a forge out of that. Um, you know, like they give you the option to like have it completely blank, the map completely blank, and just work from there. You know, and that's really cool because you know it gives you all those opportunities and like different things you can do with it, and like. Or they don't allow you to manipulate the landscape yet, do they? No, see, that's... That's what, like. that's what I would like to see. Yes, okay, like, I'm so glad you shared that opinion with me, because I've always thought about that, about that too, like, you know, just the ability to be able to manipulate, like, the sky and, like, the landscaping and everything else, like, make it all flat or make it all hilly, you know, that would be nice, you know? It would be, like, the best opportunity for trolling, and you have a private match put everyone like a bunker just keep them underground and just you know put mines everywhere you just keep starting and die be the best <laughs> again like that would be that would be really creative though like that could be that you know that could give you so many opportunities with machinima that like some people don't have right now but you make us so many different landscapes that you wouldn't be able to with the regular maps i mean i haven't even personally checked out all the maps yet because i heard some of the maps aren't even available in multiplayer i think i think that too like i think you have to you have to buy them online or at the st- like a, like a GameStop. I I, th- I did see that. I did see that. Maps in the game, but they're not available in multiplayer for online. So you can go to them in Forge and private. Oh, game. that yeah, that that is true. That is actually true. There, there are that is, that is actually true. Yes, I you don't know, know why they do yeah, that. See that one map being really useful. The I'm not sure what it's called, but it's like an asteroid. You're kind of like on asteroids, and you can travel between the two. That's yeah, that's cool. relay. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I know someone who's making a, zo- a, a a flood map for that one. Yeah, that'll that'll probably work out pretty well. <laughs> yeah, so um, again, like, I mean, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. I mean, like, again, this was not just a review. If you're still listening by this point, I mean. Like, the only way you could probably be listening to by this point if you're playing Halo 4 right now or and just listening to us or, like, any other video game. But, like, like this was, like, an overall, like, just general discussion of the entire game, not just a review. So I'll make that clear in the, in the title, you know. But uh, I like this game a lot. And, like, like some people, are, again, like, you know, they say, like, oh, Halo Reach was bad or this was bad and this one's better. Generally, like, I really don't care. I mean, like, they're all really good to me. I'm not, like, picky with my with my title, with my Halo titles here. I mean, like, there are some, like, pros and cons for each one, but, like, none that really, like, stick out above all the rest to me, you know? How do you feel about that, Bobby? For me, I think Halo 4, because Halo Reach used to be my favorite Halo game, and then Halo 4, and I was like, oh, Halo 4. For me, Halo 4. Just because... I, I like it a lot better. The story is a lot more... It's a lot there. A lot of it's there. The, the campaign is... You can play the campaign over and over again and not get bored. There's so much to do. And there's... You know, the one thing I like is the level design. There's a lot more... There's a lot of different paths that you could take. So you don't... You could just flank. If you're playing with friends, you can have... Like, you could be tactical. Which I never really saw in a Halo. It's just basically run out there and, you know, don't die. Although, um... One thing that I don't like... But one thing that I said before was um, that Halo kind of, it just, it's kind of linear in its story, I always used to say, but I think now it'll be different. Because Halo is just pretty much straightforward, like Halo 1 through 3 was pretty straightforward for storytelling wise, but I think 4 and 5 and 6 will probably be a lot more, they're focusing a lot more on that, so it'll be a lot more entertaining to watch. I think you'll... I mean, I found the I found the storyline is very entertaining for the first three games. I think what's gonna be different, like what you, what we discussed earlier. Don't get me wrong, I, I like them too, but I mean, as as I got older, it's like oh, you know, it's not that good. But one thing you were saying is about people hating a certain Halo game. I mean, they're really not. There aren't really any bad Halo games. There nothing. None of them are terrible. I mean, the worst one in my opinion is ODST, simply for the fact that it's pretty much a Halo Three repackage. It, you have a different campaign. Okay, yeah, exact. That's that's true. I mean, I really didn't consider ODST, so yeah. I mean, 
Yeah. Just, however, is the weakest one. It's not a bad game at all, but it is a weak. It is the weaker of the the entire series. I'm so- I mean, like, like Halo fans kind of have the Zelda fan syndrome where they're so used to getting good stuff that they just you know whatever it could be a good game but it was like oh it's not as good as this you know like everyone loves Ocarina of Time and then they get Twilight Princess like oh Twilight Princess sucks because it's just a rip off of Ocarina I mean it's still a great game Twilight Princess is still a great game but they just don't see that because they're just they're, they're, they're spoiled is what I'm trying to say they, they always get good good and they just don't know they just have a higher standard I mean like why are you being a Sonic fan <laughs> <laughs> And then when you get a good game like Generations, you're like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying there. Like, I mean, I had nothing really complain about that one either, except, like, for the firefight in ODST. It's like, you know, why couldn't you just, like, have a matchmaking lobby for that one? And you have Xbox Live on that one, you know what I'm saying? I have a feeling, though, that the multiplayer in 4 is going to change a bit. Because... We it- mean? I don't know, I feel like they're going to update it, because it is very early on, it just came out, and they just had a title update that came last week, which fixed some glitches, uh, but I think they're going to change it, they might add some things, maybe they might even add Firefight, I'm not sure, they might even, I don't, I don't know if they'd stoop so low as to put it as DLC and make you buy it. <laughs> oh god. I just know, I wouldn't buy it either, <laughs> but I wouldn't be surprised if they pulled something like that. Um, again, I just... Like I just wish they had more another a flying human vehicle because that'd be like you know they 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 put in the Falcon or the uh, the Hornet, Hornet you know from three I prefer the Hornet from Halo three that was my favorite I didn't really like the Falcon just because it was pretty much useless if you're the, the if you're the pilot you really can't do anything online they can't campaign you do a lot but online it's you just fly you can't shoot guns because that would be way too overpowered. I know, but, like, it kind of defeats the whole purpose of having a vehicle like that, in my opinion. Because, like, like, all the vehicles, like, we know of that have, like, the, you know, the Gatling guns on the side, they still have a gun, like, in the front where the cockpit is, you know? Yeah, but you know what they could have done for that is in Reach with the Falcon, they could have just uh, nerfed it a bit. Because in, in 4, when you play it with the Mantis online, you can tell that it's a lot less accurate and it does a lot less damage and it heats up a lot quicker. They could- right. Falcon and just make it weaker. They did that in three. They made it. They made the guns on that a lot weaker. Okay, yeah, that's true. And like, the other thing is like, the reason why that frustrates me, why they don't have like the Falcon and Halo Four, is because like that kind of like seems to contradict with the storyline, in my opinion. Because it's like in Halo Three you have a Falcon, and it's like in Halo Four you don't have another flying vehicle. I mean, come on, the humans have to have something besides a Pelican. I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying, Bobby? Yeah. You know, they, might, they might introduce a new flying vehicle in the fifth one. It's just the other the other reason why that kind of frustrates me is because, like, because, like, there were, like, some maps where I could have had, like, hey, you know, I have an idea here, you know, and, and then the Falcon could have, like, you know, hey, I could use this vehicle for this purpose, but now it's, like, because you don't have a Falcon in here, you know, it's kind of like, damn, you know? It kind of sucks because I had this idea in mind, and you know, thank you, three four three industries for crushing you know my dreams and hopes and ambitions, and thank you. That's, that I was just being I was being dramatic there, but like still, I mean, it would be nice if you know they put a Falcon in there. I mean, it did go along with Halo three, and to transition to Halo four, they should have had some human vehicle. But Halo five, you know, let's get a Halo, let's get a human flying vehicle in there, you know. Yeah, but on the topic of flying vehicles, how do you feel about the Banshee's controls? Because I don't really like them at all. Um, I'm, I, have to, I mean, the, the Banshee's controls actually confuse me, to be honest, because I still don't know how to do all the flips yet. Like, I'm you actually... The left bumper. I'm not sure. It's one of the bumpers that you push and you can do them. But the one thing that bothers me is that it, it, it's like a, when you do any of these flips or barrel rolls or anything, it's a scripted event. So it kind of screws you over. Like, they, they had it in Reach Wars kind of scripted. And it, it, you know, it just... When you did this action, it would take you out, and they would just do it. And then you, when you turn around, it would just, you know... It not let you turn or anything while you're doing this. So once you committed to doing a roll, you were doing that roll. You can't turn while you're rolling or anything like that. And in 4, it just felt like they limited it even more. So when you move, 
if you're trying to move while you're doing a roll, your camera will flip and you'll just instantly turn around. And it, I just, it just, I just hate that. I can't stand it. In Halo 3, in my opinion, had the best Banshee controls. You had the most control. You felt like you could actually, you know, dog like people when you're flying around. Every time I try to do that, I just get annihilated because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to con. I will admit it's. I will. I will say like I disagree with you. It, it does feel kind of in Halo 4. Um, I do love picking like taking out targets though with the Banshee bombs. Like, I mean. Those are always Besides the Mantis, I mean, everything, and the Scorpion tank, like, basically everything else is, like, easy target, you know, for a Banshee bomb. Yeah. You know, like, you could just go, like, a dive bomber, you know, just, like, or just go diving in, and, like, you see all these, like, helpless red people on the ground, you just blow, you just blow them up or something like that. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I haven't really found a use for the Banshee in multiplayer, because, like I said, I always just get annihilated. It's either I get in it and then get shot by a tank, or just someone hijacks me. <laughs> so yeah, that, that, I, might be, that might be more of a problem on you, you know. Yeah, it is my fault because I just suck it. I just can't get used to flying the banshee. Also, I'm still used to like Halo Three. Halo Three had like the the perfect control for the banshee. You could fly that thing in circles around anyone if you knew what you were doing. I will admit though, I still miss that Hornet or the Falcon. I, I want a flying human vehicle. <laughs> I know I, I'm getting a little obsessed over human flying vehicles, but I do really like those vehicles. Yeah. I would love when it's, you know, because they, for flying vehicles for the humans, they've always had it where it's a carrier, so you can hold like three people on there. Exactly. And that, like, provides, you know, opportunities, you know. I think that bothered me, though, is with the Falcon. In the campaign, you were seeing that the Falcon can hold, like, six people. I just, it just, it's just like, why don't they let you do that in multiplayer? Or at least Forge mode. Right. Just use it for cinema. You can make, you can have like six people in one Falcon, so you could, if you're doing like a, you know, squad, team kind of machinima. Yeah. Uh, actually do it, which is. I mean, because like, like I've seen some machinima people who have used the, like the, the, uh, the Hornet for like their machinimas. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, like, they're, they're forced to do that. Like, they're forced to have like, have the people on the Gatling guns like go off the Gatling guns, like, as if they were like, like dropping off, you know, into the enemy hot zone, you know, because that's the only way they can do it, you know. Oh shit! Hey, uh, Bobby. Okay, there you are. Can you hear me? It's it's everywhere. Hey, you good, man? I can hear you. Okay. Um. Let me just restart that. Um, but yeah, that's been a problem for machinima people as well. So yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much a lot of Halo Four. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> anything we missed. I mean, the Marines are still useless. Um, I, I, will, I will admit something though. I think the AI is a little bit better for the humans in this game. Not agree with that ever <laughs> because. I'm playing on Legendary right now, currently, and uh, the Marines, you have to drive, because Marines drive. This is the game since Halo 1. Uh, but the one thing that they hate is they've made, there, there's this thing that the AI does, and I'm not just talking about the Marines, I'm just talking about every AI, even the enemies, the elites, everyone does this. After they kill you or kill something, they have to shoot at it after it's dead, to just, I don't know, just to talk crap to it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> driving a warthog with this marine on the gunner and he's like sh he's not shooting at the the ghosts that are shooting at us he's just shooting at the dead one it's like oh, are you like that he's just shooting at it it's like okay you know oh, come on they're killing us here exactly i don't I mean, know i just think they should operate a little bit more uh sufficient efficiently instead of just sh you know making them shoot the dead enemies I know it adds a little bit more personality to the character, but to the AIs, but it's just, you know, it's kind of a nuisance when you're trying to do something and you need the AI to shoot. No, I know, I understand what you're saying, man. Um, I mean, overall... For some reason, wraiths have, like, perfect aim. <laughs> really? Snipe you with a cannon from a mile away, inside of a doorway, and you're inside the doorway pretty well. I mean, you're inside of the mammoth. I, I mean, I was inside of the mammoth, 
And this wraith just shoots one perfect shot right through the door and nails me. And I was like, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> Funny. Legendary, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so, like, I mean, yeah, we, we basically just went through, like, our whole commentary, you can say, pretty much of Halo. I mean, like, even though, like, there's some things we can, like, you know, I guess say about it, I mean, like, I really don't find that much to be wrong with the game. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, I basically just said what I had to say, you know. I mean, I'm pretty much satisfied with the game. It's a pretty well made game. I mean, it's pretty much, it's, it's basically the best Halo game that they've ever made, hands down. I mean, you could just let your nostalgia goggles blind you and say, no, Halo 1 or Halo 2. Or 3. But, like, obviously, if you look at this game and compare it to the others, is this most. But yeah, that's been a problem for machinima people as well, so, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much a lot of Halo 4. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> Anything we missed. I mean, the Marines are still useless. Um, I, I, will, I will admit something, though. I think the AI is a little bit better for the humans in this game. Not agree with that, ever. <laughs> because I'm playing on Legendary right now, currently. And uh, the Marines, you have to drive, because Marines drive. This is a given since Halo 1. Uh, but the one thing that they hate is they've made... There, there's this thing that the AI does, and I'm not just talking about the Marines, I'm just talking about every AI, even the enemies, the elites, everyone does this. After they kill you or kill something, they have to shoot at it after it's dead to just, I don't know, just to talk crap to it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're driving Warthog with this Marine on the gunner, and he's like, sh he's not shooting at the, the ghosts that are shooting at us, he's just shooting at the dead one. It's like, oh, are you like that? He's just shooting at it. It's like, okay. You know, oh, come on, they're killing us here. Exactly. I don't know, I just think they should operate a little bit more uh, sufficient, efficiently instead of just, sh you know, making them shoot the dead enemies. I know it adds a little bit more personality to the character, but to the AIs, but it's just, you know, it's kind of a nuisance when you're trying to do something and you need the AI to shoot. No, I know, I understand what you're saying, man. Um, I mean, overall... Some reason, wraiths have, like, perfect aim. <laughs> really? Snipe you with a cannon from a mile away, inside of a doorway, and you're inside the doorway pretty well. I mean, you're inside of the mammoth. I, I mean, I was inside of the mammoth, and this wraith just shoots one perfect shot right through the door and nails me. And I was like, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Legendary, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, so like... I mean, yeah, we, we basically just went through, like, our whole commentary, you can say, pretty much of Halo. I mean, like, even though, like, there's some things we can, like, you know, I guess say about it, I mean, like, I really don't find that much to be wrong with the game, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, I basically just said what I had to say, you know, I mean, I'm pretty much satisfied with the game. It's a pretty well made game, I mean, it's pretty much, it's, it's basically the best Halo game that they've ever made hands down. I mean, you could just let your nostalgia goggles blind you and say, no, Halo 1 or Halo 2. Or but, 3. Like, obviously, if you look at this game and compare it to the others, this is the most solid, best one that they've had. I can't really say that, but like, I can't say that because I have not played Halo 3 in a while, and I've not played Halo 2 in a while, but I, I mean... I had a lot of both of them when I, when I played them. <laughs> I know those games. Um... But, like, I think that, you know, despite what, despite what I've said and despite what you said, we both enjoy the game a lot, you know? Wait, definitely. I might go play it after this. <laughs> Aren't you playing it right now, though? I'm talking to you right now. We're oh, doing okay. This. <laughs> um, well, this is the podcast. Yes, this is the long podcast. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know if... Uh, yeah, just, like, I don't know, let's give stars. Like, out of five stars, I would say four Please. stars out of five, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, something about five, like, just about rating systems, five just seems like a bad thing to rate something just because simply if you put, if you give something three stars, it's not really bad, but it kind of looks bad because it's three, you know. It's not four. But out of five stars, no. I'll give it a ten. I'll give it a 9.5. 
I would give it a 9.0. Yeah, because they don't have any vehicles. We get you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, like, like, am I satisfied with my money, you know, in buying this game? Yes, I am. Am I, you know, am I happy that I bought this over, you know, Black Ops 2? You're goddamn right I am. I'm so happy I got this over Black Ops 2. You know, there's no way I'm playing. I've played Black Ops 2, and... I don't know why this game sells as much as it does. I mean, basically, now the only reason it sells is through word of mouth and because my friends have it, I should get it too, and because of little kids. But uh, this game really is not that... It's not good at all. It's overrated. It, I mean, like, it's like after the Black Ops, the first Black Ops, and it's like I saw Modern Warfare 3, and it's kind of like... Yeah, it's, it looks exactly the same, you know? The gameplay seems exactly the same. I mean, there really is no... There's really no point in buying this. I just rented it for one night, and that was it. I was done yeah. with it. One thing about Black Ops 2 is that everyone's, like, all these reviewers are saying, oh, it's the greatest Call of Duty ever made. But it, it's... I mean, I can see that they, they did upgrade zombie mode, which I know is a popular thing. I personally don't like it. Um, zombie mode, okay, I will admit this. I played the zombie mode. And it's very creative. They did some very creative things with it this time. It's kind of cool, but the one thing that bothers me, that's always bothered me about Firefight or Zombies, is that it never ends. It never has, like, an ending. And I, I just I, I just don't see a point in playing it if you can't beat it, you know? It's just, oh, you, yeah, you got all the way, you got this far, but you can't beat it, you know? There's never, like, yeah, I did that. Like, that's why I always liked Horde Mode Gears better. Just because it was 50 waves, and it was hard as hell. And you get... To, uh, to like level 40 it's hard and you know when you beat it you're like you feel accomplished but with zombies you just yeah I got this far you know I get you yeah but like okay so like again like Halo Game. 4 really glad I got it you know can't say that enough even though you know, again the complaints I've said you know I still enjoy the game a lot yeah but uh it's, it's really good I like it it's a great game but, you know, Black Ops, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm fine again with, you know, what I have, Halo, and I'm glad I made the decision, you know? For me, I think it's the, probably the best game I got this year. Uh, simply just because, I mean, I don't really buy a lot of games, and this was the only one that really caught my interest, other than, what was the other game I got this year? Uh, I, I, I haven't played Skyrim, which I kind of want to. I mean, everyone says it's a good game, but... You know, <laughs> I haven't really gotten into... Uh, I mean, I tried Oblivion and I hated it. I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for that, but, you know, whatever. I didn't really like Oblivion. I was immediately frustrated. It's like, what am I supposed to do? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's... An, I think, you know, we've, we've done, like... I think everything we need to say about Halo and Halo 4 in, in general, you know, and going into some minor details about the storyline and you know how they made a really good job with the storyline and I think really solid game overall you know yeah definitely worth getting if you're if you're listening to this and haven't gotten it well we've just spoiled everything for you but yeah. <laughs> it, I think you should if you're deciding between this and you know Black Ops or something else I definitely would get this it's a lot more fun oh yeah definitely Beside, I mean, compared to Black Ops, I think this is definitely. I've played both of them, and they're. I mean, it's not. It's nothing compared to Halo Four. Halo Four, you can see where work has been put. Hey, Black Ops Two is just copy paste, copy paste. I I mean, like, I don't want to like start a, a rage war. I mean, I oh, just. Those are the best, though. <laughs> I hate those. I mean, like, they're annoying. But I mean, I just you know. Again, after Black Ops, the first Black Ops, and I saw Modern Warfare 3, you know, then I just became dissatisfied with Call of Duty. I was dissatisfied after Modern Warfare 2. I didn't like, I didn't really like Modern Warfare 2. It kind of disappointed me. Call of Duty 4 was the last good one, in my opinion. World at War didn't do it for me. I hated World War 2 shooters just because they were so overdone, and they just did it again. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I mean, whatever, so... I mean that just basically wraps up our, you know, I think that, I think that wraps it up for us, you know. Halo 4, go get it.
Yes, go get Halo 4. <laughs> Alright, so if you made it this far, congratulations. And again, Halo 4 rules. Bobby, I think you could attest to that. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. It's, uh, it's, I, saw, I, feel, I feel like I'm repeating that, but yeah. Pretty good. Uh, it's a good game. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a good game. It's a good game. Okay, okay. Uh, call it your babies, uh, but yeah. Um. <laughs> Alright, well then that's it, everybody. Thanks for listening in.